Take your Bible. We're going to be back in Joshua chapter number 23 tonight. Joshua chapter number 23. Israel had known many battles. They had, we know, a few days of defeat caused by their own problems, their own issues. But they had many wonderful victories, thank, uh, thanks to God. At this point in their history, they had reached a relatively peaceful time, a time when they could enjoy the blessings of the Lord. They were enjoying a time of rest, a time when they could reflect on their labors and thank the Lord for His wonderful provisions for them. Uh, they had, to a certain extent, possessed their possessions. And it's often during peaceful times that we can become lax and slack and we allow our commitment and devotion to the Lord to slip. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Talk about the danger of complacency. It's always the danger in the midst of spiritual blessings to forget about the Lord. Moses had warned them about this uh, back in Deut Deuteronomy 8, verse 13 and 14. I'm going to read that to you. It says, When when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee out, forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Um, here in chapter 23, we see Joshua called the leaders of the nation together here, and he had some advice for all of those who were in authority, but all of us would do well to listen to Joshua's admonition here. Joshua was not a pessimist, uh, but, he, but he was a realist. <laughs> uh, he recognized the danger of complacency and uh, not giving attention uh, to the things that we ought to give attention to. Amen. Now, let's take a look at uh, verses 1 through 5. First of all, we see Joshua reminded them of God's faithfulness. Verse 1, Joshua 23, verse 1, And it came to pass a long time after that the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about, that Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. Uh, and Joshua called for all Israel and for their elders and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers and said unto them, I am old and stricken in age. And ye have seen all that the Lord your God hath done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. Behold, I have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribes from, from Jordan with all the nations that I have cut off even unto the great sea westward. And the Lord your God, he shall expel them from before you and drive them from out of your sight, and ye shall possess their land as the Lord your God hath promised uh, unto you. So J Joshua is reminding them of God's faithfulness. Uh, you know, we all need to be reminded of how God has blessed us. Amen. May we never, never forget how good God is, is to us all the time. Uh, I want us to, hold, if you mark your place there, we're going to be back to Joshua 23, but I, I want to turn to Psalm 103, um, one of my favorite psalms that uh, speaks to this very thing of being mindful of how uh, the Lord has blessed us. The psalmist David uh, is the author of this, and we see his heart here of wanting to bless the Lord um, for the benefits that he received from the Lord. First thing that we see here, we all need to be reminded of how God has blessed us. A, a verse number one, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Uh, and then he starts mentioning those benefits in verse number three, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Think about it for the forgiveness of sin. Uh, what a great thing uh, that the Lord has forgiven our sin. He forgives our, the sins of the past and the sins of the present. As we uh, uh, ask the Lord, uh, we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, according to 1 John 
1, verse 9 and 10. And, um, you know, the, we see here also that he talks about the healing uh, of disease. Uh, now, now, the Lord doesn't all, uh, always choose to heal, but the, if you get healing, uh, the Lord did it. <laughs> who healeth all thy diseases. Number, num, number four, uh, four, verse number 4, Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Uh, our redemption. Think about the redemption uh, we have in Christ Jesus that was afforded us by what Christ did for us on the cross. Amen. Think of where we would be had Christ not redeemed us. Amen. We would all be in a, in a home. <laughs> His redemption was the, the, the great for us and uh, accomplished great things in our hearts and lives for us, for our benefit. We see it there, he talks about who crowneth thee, in the middle of verse 4, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Uh, the, you want to read more about those, uh, you can read verses 8 through 18 for, for time's sake. I'm not going to read this whole thing tonight, but uh, let me encourage you to, to come back and, and read the whole psalm. And he talks about the loving kindness and tender mercies there in verses 8 through 18. But um, satisfaction and provision, he mentions in verse number 5, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Uh, and then uh, executing righteousness and judgment for the oppressed. Look at verse number 6, the Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. And uh, then... He, we see it talks about down in verse number 19, his sovereignty. He, the Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Uh, aren't you glad God's in control? Uh, man's, not, man's not in control. Uh, you know, uh, when I read uh, something like what I read tonight uh, as we began the, the prayer time, uh, what's happening in our country, uh, we need to be quick to remember that the Lord knows what's going on. Uh, I say uh, that those things, I, I read the letter for the benefit of us to, to pray and to be wise for the things that are coming our right. way. Uh, because we need, to, we need to have knowledge of what's coming, but uh, the Lord's got it under control. He does. And that doesn't mean that we might not see some hardship uh, or some difficult days uh, through some of those things. But I'm so glad that there's nothing going to come our way except it comes filtered through Him. Okay? Amen. Well, he, he guards our life, and uh, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. doesn't mean all things are good, but God's going to work it out to our good, and we can trust the Lord fully. And what a blessing that is. Um, the result should be that we should... Bless the Lord. I mean, look at the, the final verses there, verse 20 through 22 of, of uh, Psalm 103. It says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, and all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Uh, all his works bless him. Amen. And so the result should be that we should bless the Lord. The Lord uh, wants us to glorify Him in all that we do. Um, but our tendency, like Israel, is to forget. Sometimes it's the attitude of, you know, what have you done for me lately? You know, people kind of forget uh, that the Lord is actively involved in our day-to-day -day lives. He, he really is. I can't think about how much worse it could be if, if the Lord was not intricately involved in our lives. Uh, who knows? I, I believe uh, throughout eternity, maybe He'll show us some of the things that uh, we dodged because yeah. His hand uh, was on our lives. Amen. And, uh, you know, simple things like forgetting where you put your key at and you get frustrated and say, man, I know I had that key. And, and, and you spend the next five minutes looking for it. And then uh, uh, you get out there on the road and somebody's had a wreck down the road. And, but you weren't in it. Might have been those five minutes that kept you from being in there. You know, you, we, just, we just don't know. Uh, but the, the Lord does things, and uh, He is faithful. And our tendency is to, for, to forget 
uh, and it's, it's real easy for us to remember the bad things of the past and to forget the good things. Uh, we need to, re to remember uh, all that the God has done. Joshua reminded the nation that God had done so much for them and He would do more. That's what He was talking about there in verse number 5 that we read in our text. Uh, he said, uh, and your, the, the Lord your God, He shall expel them from before you and drive them out from out of your sight, and you shall possess their land as the Lord your God hath promised unto you. He said, He will drive them out before you. That, uh, when I got to thinking about that phrase, drive them out before you, uh, that's not without them having to do something. Amen? <laughs> uh, if they're before you, you're, you, you've got to be putting up an effort. And uh, uh, that's one of the things that where the uh, Israelites kind of failed on. And we'll see that a little bit later uh, in our study. But Joshua reminded them of God's faithfulness. And then the second thing I want us to see tonight is Joshua reminded them of God's unchanging standards. There in verses 6 through 11. Uh, look at verse number 6 of our text, Joshua 23, verse 6. Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, did ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left? Uh, he reminds him concerning the, the book of the law, God's word. Remember what God told Joshua at the beginning of this book. Uh, think, think back to Joshua chapter number 1, verse 7 and 8. He, he, God told him, he said, Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. But, uh, Moses had also instructed them. We know in Deuteronomy 5.32, Moses said, You shall observe to do, therefore, as the Lord your God hath commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Straight and narrow. Amen? So keep, keep, keep it on the narrow way. Uh, do what God te tells you to do. And Joshua reminded them not only of, of God's unchanging standards concerning the Word of God, but also concerning their walk with God. Look at verse number 7. Verse number 7 here says, uh, uh, that ye come not among these nations, uh, uh, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to, to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. Um, he says, but cleave that's, a, that's an important word. You ought to circle that word, cleave. It's going to become in, important in some of the other verses that we're going to take a look at here. But cleave unto the Lord your God, as ye have done uh, unto this day. For the Lord uh, hath driven out from before you great nations and strong. But as for you, no man hath been able to stand before you unto this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand for the Lord your God, he it is that fighteth for you as he hath promised. Um, so uh, they were to bind themselves to the Lord. The, the word used there is cleave. It means to stick close, to adhere. It's got to stick like glue is the way we would think of it. Amen. Um, Joshua encourages them to stick close to the Lord, not letting anything... You know, if you stick close to somebody, nothing can come between you and them. And that's the idea between us and the Lord. We're to stick close to the Lord so that nothing comes between us and the Lord. This wasn't anything new. Uh, Joshua was just reiterating what they had been told previously. Take your, take your Bible, uh, and again, hold your place here. We'll be back. But look over in Deuteronomy. Uh, I'm going to look at several different places here. Deuteronomy 10 first. Deuteronomy 10 and verse number 20. Deuteronomy chapter number 10 and verse number 20. And we're going to see that word cleave again. It says, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, 
And to him thou shalt, uh, shalt thou cleave. There it is. Cleave and swear by his name. Um, look in chapter number 11, verse number 22 and 23. So for if, if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and here it is, here's the word, and to cleave unto him, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. And then um, look at uh, Deuteronomy 13 and verse number 4. Deuteronomy 13, verse number 4. So ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear Him, keep His commandments, obey His voice, and ye shall serve Him, and there's that word again, and cleave unto Him. Uh, cleaving's a big part of what the Lord wanted them to do. Look, look one more place. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter number 30 and verse number 20. Well, let's look at verse 19 and 20 here. He says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey His voice and that thou mayest cleave, there it is, cleave unto Him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob uh, to give them. Uh, Joshua was especially concerned uh, about the false gods. Look, look back at our, our text there, uh, chapter 23 and verse number 7, and you'll see that. He says that ye come not among these nations these that remain among you neither make mention of the name of their gods nor cause to swear by them, uh, neither, neither serve them nor bow yourselves unto them. Now we know from studying uh, the books of Samuel and, and the books of Kings and Chronicles that uh, Joshua's concerns, his, uh, what, he, what he, he thought might happen actually did happen. And uh, they did get drawn away by other gods. Uh, and uh, that's a sad story. Uh, we saw how they were carried away into captivity because of that. Nothing should come between us and the Lord. This is the same word cleave that the Lord used concerning the, the relationship of a husband and wife. Nothing and no one should come between us. We're, we're, we're leaving cleave. Cleave, cleave together. Uh, this is not just an Old Testament thing. It wasn't just for the Israelites. Uh, if you remember when Barnabas was sent by the church uh, in Jerusalem to the new church in Antioch, in Acts 11, 23, it uh, says, who, when he came had, and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. Cleave. We, want, we need to cleave to the Lord. That's great advice for us. We need to stick with the Lord. Romans 12, verse number 9, Paul told the Romans, he said, let love be without dissimulation. It's another one in $50 words. Okay. It means hypocrisy. Let, let your love be without hypocrisy. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Cleave. So Joshua reminded them of God's unchanging standards concerning the Word of God, their walk with God, and uh, concerning their love of God. Back in our text there, look at uh, verse number 11 now. He says, uh, Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Lord your God. Um, and we, we know that that, that is important. Uh, uh, it, in fact, it's part of what's called the Shema uh, from Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 and 5. Uh, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. I mean, that was... Israelites knew that verse. They, those, those verses, they knew those. They knew that's what they were supposed to do. Joshua feared that the love that they had for the Lord might grow cold. And he recognized the danger of complacency. 
You know, it happens all the time. It can happen between husband and wife. Get complacent about their love one for another. Sort of begin t- taking one another for granted. Yeah, yeah. I got the new Louis uh, here tonight, and uh, uh, it, it, if, you, if you're not careful, it can happen. Uh, friends and family sometimes. You, you, you uh, if you're complacent, you kind of lose the relationship. They're there. The church and God. Also, you know, we as a church, we need to uh, be careful of, that we don't grow cold toward Him, that we uh, don't grow complacent in our walk with Him. Remember how the Lord Jesus Christ questioned Peter regarding Peter's love for Him in John 21, verse 15. Uh, when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Now, we don't know what the these was that, that He was talking about. Uh, he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. Now, the bottom line is it doesn't matter what the these is. Okay? The Lord knew what it was. Peter probably had an idea about what it was. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you love something more than the Lord, it's going to be a problem no matter what it is. Remember Christ's admonition to the church at Ephesus. In the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter number 2, verse 4 and 5, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. You say, well, well, that was the church at Ephesus. Well, remember, each one, each one of the messages to those churches ends with, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. In other words, uh, if you're not careful, it could happen to you. Amen? And so we need to have an ear to hear, and we need to make sure we haven't left our first love. So Joshua reminded them of God's faithfulness. Joshua reminded them of God's unchanging standards. And then Joshua warned them of the consequences of complacency. Look at verse 12 and 13 of our text. Joshua 23, verse number 12. So, else if you do in any wise go back and cleave, there's that word again, cleave unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you, and shall make marriages with them, and go in unto them, and they to you, know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be as snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until ye perish from off this good land, which the Lord your God hath given you. Um, you know, there would be loss of position. He talks about here, and you know, if they neglected these things that he was telling them about, they would stand to lose their supreme position that God had given them as being His people. I mean, uh, the nation of Israel would lose its distinctive character of being God's people. And when they were carried away into captivity, you know, it really was kind of a joke to their captors. <laughs> it's God, God's people, you know. Uh, and their, their testimony was, would be ineffective. There are many believers who've lost their testimony among the lost world and among their family and, and, uh, from inconsistent living. Um, but there would be a loss of position, there would be loss of power. I mean, God had blessed them with much might and power. He had fought their battles for them. They had experienced the power of God working in and through them. But if they neglected the things that Joshua had mentioned, they would become powerless. And so there would be loss of position, loss of power, and then there would be loss of peace. Uh, instead of the freedom and liberty that they now enjoyed, they would once again find themselves in bondage just like they had been in Egypt. Now the sad part about it is that uh, they didn't remember how their parents uh, had been in bondage. Uh, these, were, um, these were the young people. Uh, they, the bondage didn't mean as much to them in those young days, but uh, uh, sin would master their lives and they would become ensnared and trapped. And Joshua could see the possibility of trouble ahead. He knew what complacency could do to the nation. Don't think that sin can't do the same thing today, because it can. Sin robs us of our position, our power, our peace, 
just as well as it did with the Israelites. Uh, don't think for one minute uh, that uh, things can't turn the wrong way if we turn the wrong way uh, and not don't cleave to the Lord. So Josh, Joshua reminded them of God's faithfulness, God's unchanging standards, and the consequences of complacency. And then last of all, we see here, Joshua gave them a solemn farewell. Now, uh, he thought he was about to die. <laughs> and so who's going to go ahead and tell him farewell? Uh, look at verse number 14. And behold, he said, This day I am going the way of all the earth, and you know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing that faileth uh, of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you, uh, all are come to pass unto you, and not one thing uh, hath failed thereof. And, and just the, that's the faithfulness of God, isn't it? That's the faithfulness of God. Uh, it, look at verse 15. Therefore it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you, which the Lord your God promised you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things until he have destroyed you from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you when ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God which he commanded you and have gone and served other gods and bowed yourselves to them then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and ye shall perish quickly from off the good land which he hath given you. Now uh, death we know will come to all, unless the Lord comes back while we're we who know Him are living, you know we we always hope to go that route, don't we? Amen. Uh, death is not something that we like to think about, but it is a reality. When it's all said and done, and our life has come to an end, what kind of legacy will we leave behind? Will it be a, an example of faithfulness or an example of failure? Joshua reminded them that God had never failed and it will never fail to do what he said he would do. And that means with the good things that came their way, but also with the judgment that would come their way. You know, if God said, you don't cleave me, you go cleave to those other gods, and it's not going to go well for you, guess what? It wasn't going to go well. Uh, now, they would certainly have times where they would fail God, but God would not fail them. That's true for each of us also. It's a reality of living in this flesh. We're going to fail God. But uh, uh, God will not fail in His promises to us. Now, God told Joshua in, in Joshua 1.5, He said, There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. And, and the Lord, He was saying here, you know, the Lord been, had fulfilled that promise to him. Uh, we know Solomon in his prayer at the dedication of the temple in 1 Kings 8 and verse 56 said, Blessed be uh, the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel. According to all he promised, there hath not uh, failed one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. Um, Solomon acknowledged that the Lord fulfilled what he said he was going to do. Now we see here in Joshua's farewell that he warns of what will come to pass. And, you know, some may not think of Joshua as being a prophet, but he certainly was on the mark with this. I believe he was a prophet. Uh, there, uh, what he, uh, history records how that the people became uh, just like what Joshua says here. They began to become influenced more and more by the nations around them until they became just like them. And as a result, God judged them and brought against them powers who would carry them away from this land into captivity. In Joshua's words, there in verse number 15, that first phrase there, therefore it shall come to pass. And it did. Now, therefore it shall come to pass. So tonight we've been reminded of God's faithfulness, of God's unchanging standards, and we have been warned of the danger of complacency. It's easy for us to forget the Lord and what He's done for us. It's so easy for us to get so caught up in what's going on in the world around us that we forget that there's an eternity to come. We need to make sure we're prepared for eternity. There's so much to lose when we neglect the Word of God, when we neglect our walk with God, and when we, we, we neglect our love for God. Complacency in our church is a great danger to us and to those around us. Amen. Well, that's our Bible study for this evening. Um, we'll...
pull out our prayer list, we'll pray for the needs that are there, and we'll be dismissed with this prayer.